Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and today I am reviewing the Meister R Zeta CRD coilovers that we installed on our project car, the 2019 Mazda MX-5 Miata RF. So if you recall, I went over the various coilovers available for the ND Mazda Miata, went through my process in selecting the Meister R Zeta CRDs, I then did a video where I specifically set the coilover ride height, doing that before I put them on the car just to make it easier. And then I also set the spring preload. And then I did two videos installing the coilovers, one for the front and then one for the rear. So if you're looking at it, possibly installing them yourself, take a look. I go through the process step by step. I have driven the car a couple hundred miles, let the coilovers settle a bit. Uh, give me a chance to get familiar with them, play around with the ride height a little bit, uh, as well as the damping settings. Uh, the Meister R Zeta CRDs do have 32-way uh, damping adjustment. That is both the uh, compression and rebound. And then I also then had a performance alignment done on this car from a shop that specializes in Mazda Miatas. At the end, I will let you know my ultimate feedback, whether or not I would recommend the Meister R Zeta CRDs. So if you're interested in hearing more, then stay tuned. Let's start off by going over the ride height. Actually, before we start off, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe, turn on the notifications so you're notified of any new videos. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. With that said, the ride height. So with coilovers, now that we have a nice broad range of different ride height settings to choose from, as opposed to lowering springs, we can adjust our coilovers to whatever ride height we want. And what I did for now is I did adjust the ride height for the front to 13 and 3 eighths of an inch. And that's measuring from the center of the wheel cap to the bottom of the fender well. And in the rear is 13 and a half inches. And comparing that to the OEM, that is roughly one inch to a little bit more than one inch of a drop. And although it really has taken away a lot of that wheel gap, as you can see, there's still a little bit there. I would consider this visually speaking, from my perspective, more of a sporty OEM look. Like I said, I did wait a little bit, put a couple hundred miles on the car, let everything settle, make sure that there's no problems with the install, which there weren't. Uh, also familiarize myself with the coilovers, make sure I got the right height where I wanted it to be, which it is, at least for now. Then had a performance alignment completed. The alignment specs I used was from Flying Miata, so I'll give you a look somewhere around here as to what the specs look like, or you can go visit the Flying Miata website. So, so as you can see here, I have the OEM strut tower bar, and that definitely impacts your ability to adjust the damping settings in the front. I can get my finger back here and I can make the adjustments. However, I just want to point that out. I mean, for some of you, you got fat fingers, fat hands. It can be difficult. So one thing to know when you're making your adjustments, uh, this is both for the rear here, these extensions, as well as the front. I have noticed that when you have the setting is all the way turned all the way to the hard hardest point where you then make your adjustments starting from the hardest point your initial turn uh, sometimes is a little sticky or grabby and that has resulted in me turning in actually more than one click so after that it's very good from a tactile feel you get uh, confidence in you know knowing when you've changed the setting. However, just from the very beginning, it's a little grabby and just something to keep an eye out for when you're trying to make your uh, adjustments. But other than that, no problems. So I started my first couple of days, I put it on all the way soft, which resulted in a very nice soft compliant ride. I would even say that it's softer than the OEM. So if you're concerned that the coilovers would be too harsh, you know what, if you put both the front 
in the rear damping settings on full soft you probably will be absolutely happy with them now personally i thought they were too soft the only time i could see anyone wanting to do that who got coilovers is potentially if you're going on a long ride maybe all highway you're not looking for any sporty feel to it and you just want a more compliant ride fine put it on the soft setting i then drove it for a while on all hard so again the front and the rear all of it set on the hardest setting and that is hard i don't know aside from driving on a smooth autocross why you would want to do that but the point is i'm very happy that the difference between the full soft and the full hard is noticeable you can fine tune your settings to anywhere in between and that's what i've been doing now i'll say off the bat i haven't found the perfect setting just yet for me but currently i am using a negative 10 on the front and a negative 12 on the rear and where did i come up with that Quite frankly, I started all the way from hard and started making adjustments, making them softer as I go. And I will probably make them softer still. I do think the negative 10 and the negative 12, again, front and rear, is almost there, very close. However, there are some roads, especially here in where I'm in, uh, Massachusetts, th the roads are really harsh, uh, a lot of broken pavement, and it can, it can get jarring. So I'll go on a ride and I'll think this is perfect for me, go on another ride in different roads and it's a little bit harsh for my, my liking. So I wouldn't be surprised if I end up with the front maybe going to negative 12, maybe negative 14 and with the rear being either a, a minus two or a minus three on top of the front. So I have driven this car on a highway, more of a cruising, and I have put the damping on some softer settings and it's been really compliant, a nice smooth ride. So no issues over uneven pavement, over bumps or potholes. It really takes them very well. Now, of course, I don't think the, the Mazda Miata, this ND Miata, actually had a fantastically smooth compliant ride to begin with. So I think it's relatively speaking. I've then also, adjusted the damping to a more aggressive uh, ride, taking on some roads that are more curvy, and this car has been very well planted. And I point that out because although I've planned all along to install a front sway bar, actually front and rear sway bar in this car, to take away some of that body lean that we have around the corners, I'm not sure that you really have to. If you are a, an autocrosser, if you take your car to the track, I can absolutely see the benefit in doing so. But if you're looking at removing some of that body lean, and for the most part, you're just daily driving your car, just spirited driving on the roads, you may be fine just with the coilovers. It does absolutely take away a lot of that body lean. There is no dive, there is no squat from accelerating or braking and the car does not really pitch all that much, still does to some extent under hard cornering, it still does, but it has taken away a lot of it. I'm gonna give it some time. I'm gonna make sure I fine tune my damping just the way that I want it. We'll see what the end result is and see if I ultimately end up putting sway bars on the car. So now the real question, which I'm sure you're all asking is, would I recommend the Meister R Zeta CRD coilovers? I think it all depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a track focused coilover, maybe not. However, if you're looking for a coilover to give you enough adjustability in the damping uh, to fine tune, your ride and to adjust your ride depending on your conditions. So maybe you have an occasional autocross or a track event on one day and then the next day you're using your car to commute uh, to work. These Meister R Zeta CRDs I have found to be very compliant, meaning they're very versatile in their settings. I can find already, I notice I can find a setting that will be more aggressive should I want it to be? And for the price point, a little over $1,000, as compared to a lot of other coilovers out there, I think it's a very good bargain. Uh, I'm really happy with these. And of course, I'm sure the performance alignment also plays a significant role in how the car feels. So I don't want to discount that. 
if you are looking at coilovers or springs, make sure you get it, an alignment done afterwards. If you have the Meister R, give me your feedback. Let me know what you think of the Meister R Zeta CRDs. Thank you once again, and until next time.